Hi, I'm Dr. Ron Klatz for Immortality Now, and I'm here with Dr. David Silva, who's with Targeted Medical Pharma. Pharma, yeah. thank you. Oh, well, not really pharma, I guess. <laughs> uh, and we're at the 25th International Congress on Anti-Aging Medicine here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, Dr. Silva, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. And, you know, our, our audience is always looking to hear from the horse's mouth, okay, yeah, you are a practicing physician with a background in emergency medicine. Rheumatology. Rheumatology, even better. I was a rheumatologist. Okay. I was the clinical chief rheumatology at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles. Well, that's fantastic. And so you practiced pain management. Correct. And so you took care of people with chronic inflammatory diseases. And you know, they say that people who have chronic inflammatory disease are really aging prematurely. That we all have inflammatory disease, and that's one of the causes of, of, of aging. And that by adjusting uh, or, or interrupting inflammatory disease, you're really making a improvement in the physiology of an individual and uh, helping to prevent some of their aging related problems. But everybody is going to have pain problems, arthritic problems, musculoskeletal problems as they grow older. So, in your experience at Cedar Sinai, for 14 years, what did you find was the connection between aging, inflammation, and rheumatism? Well, it was, it was unbelievable because, you know, when I, as I came up as a traditional MD, and you'd use pharmaceuticals, and clearly they have a very important role in controlling pain, but you're really controlling the symptom, not the actual root cause of what's going on. And through a lot of work I was doing through other people, began to understand the role of nutrition and healthy eating and the role of things such as neurotransmitters and amino acids, and how it can impact not only pain, but again on the root cause and also reducing inflammation. That without you know having to use heavy duty steroids and anti-inflammatories, you could reduce pain getting to the root cause in the neuron and actually show that you could reduce inflammation as well. And so without and this was without drugs, this was with no drugs. nutrition products, essentially foods. Yeah, medical therapy, foods. Therapy, exactly. Therapy basically, foods. Was, basically, when we say foods, but it's actually amino acids in a capsule with other substances that help to promote absorption, help them to get to the right cell in the brain and actually prevented the effect of so called attenuating or wearing down. And we could show that you could reduce inflammation, reduce pain, and not only just reduce it short term, but you could see these people six months a year, two years later, ensuring that the, the effect can, can sustain and continue to be effective. One of the problems with traditional medication, you give someone a pain medication. And after, yeah, it may work initially, but over a period of weeks to months, the effect wears off and you're back where you started, so now you're also addicted to a pain medication with these more natural substances. And what kind of substances are we talking about? Well, I used a product predominantly called Theramine, which is a amino acid base, but uses something called targeted cellular technology to help make the amino acids basically work better, get absorbed better, and get into the brain where they're supposed to get. But there's a number of things that you can do, because we know that patients with pain, you can imagine, if you have someone who Well, okay, pain, now the patients say they feel better. Yes. That's great, and I mean, that really is the sine qua non, or the, 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 the gold standard, of, of, of being a physician, you're making somebody feel better. But unfortunately, we live in a world that loves scientific evidence. So how do we know that they're feeling better because of the therapeutic food or the amino acid or the nutritional intervention versus they're feeling better because you're just such a, a wonderful doctor and they just feel better being around you? And I can tell you, we, we actually, we've shown in double-blind placebo-controlled trials so where some people got basically sugar, sugar and other people got the actual amino acids, showed that it was actually effective. Plus, we actually measured amino acid levels, which we knew were low in patients with chronic pain, and were able to show after a month that, as that the direct increase in these amino acid levels correlated with reduction in pain. So you were actually able to show the physiologic response correlate with the laboratory response. Okay, that's fantastic. Now, what does this have to do with aging, and premature aging, and the, 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 the problems that people have as they grow older, or how are we going to get from where we are today into the bright new future of life expectancies of 80, 90, 100, and not being crippled? Well, pain is linked to inflammation, and we all know inflammation is linked to heart disease, stroke, 
cancer, all these other things. And if you use the right nutritional methodologies, you can not only reduce pain, but you actually reduce inflammation. We actually measured CRP levels, a measure of inflammation, and showed you could reduce C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein, exactly. Yes. And we reduced them by 50% with nutritional management. And so not only- That's you, impressive, 50% yes, reduction. 50% reduction, I average. And so- and Because this CRP is associated with heart disease, brain disease, joint disease, cancer. Alzheimer's, can, can, yeah, cancer is a big one. Yeah, so- Heart attack. Can, exactly, heart attacks. And so not only are you reducing pain, but because you get to the root cause, rather than treating the symptom, you actually show not only a reduction in pain, but a reduction in inflammation. And that obviously has benefits, as you discussed so clearly, in terms of live, not only living longer, but living healthy. It's great to live longer, but you want to live longer in a way that you can enjoy life, embrace life, and be healthy doing it. That's the key. Yes. That is, in fact, the key. Now, Dr. Silver, I know you have an interest, not just in rheumatology, but in, in longevity medicine. Yes. Are you a member of the American Academy of Advanced Aging Medicine? I'm, I'm pleased to say this is my first time here. Okay. It's my first time coming to the conference, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm just joining the organization right now, but I'm so thrilled to be here seeing all the opportunity and all the new you know, interest and research that's going on in this area. So that can, again, not only people living longer, but living healthier, living a quality of life, well in their 70s, 80s, 90s. He said, my wife had a grandmother who 98 years old walked down my aisle. And I said, everyone should be lucky enough and if we can do things to help them do that, and seeing what's going on in this conference that's gonna allow people to do that is just magnificent. That's fantastic. And in your practice, in your experience dealing with the with elderly, the, 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 the oldest segment of your practice, what do you find has the most beneficial effect in improving the quality of their life? It's, it's some simple things, staying active. Right. Maybe, now some can't go to the gym, or walking, maintaining weight, maintaining a healthy diet, and taking the right supplements that, need, that are needed, maybe based on what their diseases are, or maybe just for better wellness and longevity. But obviously each individual, but it's that combination. All things, it's not medicine we're talking about, we're talking about the right, the right foods, the right supplements, the right exercise, all can let you live longer and healthier. Okay, now I have to ask you a personal, well, maybe a personal question. Yes. I used to do pain management, and the secret to my success when I did pain management, and, and I guess I'm giving my age away, mm -hmm. but Motrin just came out mm -hmm. and was just becoming a popular drug yes. as a prescription drug. It yes. wasn't over the counter in my day. Mm -hmm. In my day, well, it was much stronger too. It was not 100 milligrams. It was milligrams. 800 milligrams. It was 800 yeah. milligram dose. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful but for your stomach and the, kidneys. It was the bomb. Yes. I mean, it was amazing for all kinds of inflammatory conditions and for pain conditions. And I used it like... Like candy. Probably <laughs> so. I don't know whether I should admit that, but yes, I did. Okay. And it worked. And it worked well. And I I felt good about myself. I felt good about my practice because I made people feel better. And I didn't keep them on it forever. I used it appropriately and when their pain levels reduced, I took their medications reduced. I ended up getting them off it. But just this past month, a very disturbing paper was published about non steroidal anti-inflammatories, of which Motrin is one, mm -hmm. but supposedly the entire category of non steroidal anti-inflammatories can increase the risk of a cardiovascular event, a heart attack, and increase it by 100%. I mean, uh, you know, double your risk of heart attack simply by taking non steroidals and just supposedly a couple days worth. What is your read on this? Well, and one of my research. areas of research was actually looking at the effects of anti inflammatories in heart disease. Oh, then you're so the very right familiar. To talk to. Very okay. familiar. I actually developed the use of the, the, in the early 2000s, I was involved with the military via system, how you should use these drugs. So, right. we have a great area of interest, probably done about 20 studies. We know that because of the way anti inflammatories work, that they, they can, there's, and I, not to get too deep in the weeds, but we now understand that all anti inflammatories probably increase your risk of heart attack through a number of different mechanisms. They cause fluid retention. Including aspirin? And except for aspirin. Aspirin's unique. Aspirin's, aspirin's unique. Aspirin's okay. unique, and the reason aspirin's unique is something called it, the way it binds platelets, it makes your platelets less sticky. Right. So therefore, we know clotting is what causes but heart attack. But do non steroidals make the blood a little thinner as they, well? No, they do and they don't. Okay. Because the way they work, 
unlike an aspirin, which binds to your platelet and lasts for seven to 10 days, all the other anti-inflammatories only last for a couple hours. So then they get the other effect, called the COX-1 effect, which actually can lead to other issues. And so, because the COX-2 effect is the anti-inflammatory side, the COX-1 effect is the clotting side. I mean, I'm simplifying this greatly. And therefore, since some of the pain relieving and anti-platelet effect wears off, then you get some of the pro effects. And again, it's, it's a much more complicated subject. Okay, so, so when should you be concerned about car increasing cardiac risk if you're on non steroidal anti-inflammatories? Well, or anybody, should you be concerned? Yeah, well, the question, I think, depends on who you are and what you're taking for and how long you're taking it. Because one of the things you point out, we've known this for a while, the, the most commonly known risk of anti-inflammatories is ulcers, bleeding ulcers. It increases your risk several times. Well-established signs. What people didn't understand is what was your greatest risk of getting an ulcer? It's the first one to two weeks of taking the medicine. So we, this thought that, oh, if I only take it for a day or two, it's safe. You know, maybe if you take a dose here, a dose here, you get an ache and pain, you get a migraine, you take one dose here and one dose there, fine. But if you're someone who has to be on regular medication, if, you're, if you have high blood pressure, if you have diabetes, if you have a history of heart disease, if you have history of kidney problems, you should be really cautious of how you look at this and take it. You're probably aware of this. The American Geriatric Society a few years ago actually said no one over the age of 75 should take it because age is its own risk factor for the complications of non -steroidals. Who are the people who most likely take it? It's the arthritics. Who's the most likely to get arthritis? Older patients. So the older the patient who's the highest risk of these medicines is also the one most likely to be taking it. And needing it. So it's looking at all those factors and deciding are you at risk? Because we do have alternatives. We talk about nutritional management of pain and inflammation. Now what about what about taking vitamin E along with it that again you is know, a beneficial effect to the heart, mm -hmm. a beneficial effect on platelet, yeah. uh, garlic as well. Now, I mean, there are a number of different supplements, vitamin E, garlic. So you really have to balance out You have out to balance, may admit it, but I, I'm not sure it's enough to, to overtake. And a unique problem with ibuprofen is the fact can, can if you, let's say you're taking aspirin for heart disease, you know, and over the age of 50, commonly recommended. If you take an ibuprofen before you take an aspirin, it may block the good effects of aspirin. So it's not only the medicine you take, but the timing for the other medicine. So you really got to take all that into account. Okay. Well, thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay. And I hope I hope to see you again here next year. Okay.